Welcome. Welcome to the new podcast. We haven't named it yet. This is going to be, this is the first one. I told you that I like tattoos, guns, and Jesus, but we're still thinking it through. Are we? I, I mean, I like to think that we are. Are we? <laughs> <laughs> I like to think that we are. Hmm. I, I mean, I like all those things. Yeah. A lot. Seems like it would but be But I would go when or, the order's probably inaccurate. I would hope. Yeah. <laughs> probably go like... Jesus guns tattoos, mm. but that's not as catchy. Where is Cincinnati chili on that list? You know, we haven't talked about this, but before we get to our sponsors or we, we get, we get to actual Bible stuff, I'm not a big Cincinnati chili fan. I like skyline chili cheese conies mm. and I like gold star three ways from time to time. Yeah. But other than that, I'm I, like I said, we've talked about this. If I go to Dixie chili, I get that Euro. Yeah. Because it is delicious. They do have the, the one with uh, pickle and mayonnaise on it, which sounds awful, but is truly, is delicious. Hold on a second. What, pickle and mayonnaise? Yeah, it's called the alligator. I don't know why. It's a pickle. Oh, it's the pickle in the bun. Yeah. with uh, So you got hot dog, pickle, mayonnaise, cheese, which sounds just... I I'm, in, I'm in. It sounds yeah. like the desolation of abomination, it but it's, it's good. <laughs> this is what Daniel spoke of. Yeah, right. Yeah. I'm, I'm in. Jesus spoke of. Amen. Quoted Daniel. Mm. Yeah. That's how we know it's accurate. Correct. No, I mean, that's how I know it's accurate. Right. So, well, we just want to welcome you guys. This uh, We're from Burlington Baptist Church. This is our new pastor, Josh. And I'm Danny, uh, worship pastor. And we are going to uh, revamp the podcast. And we're going to go through some of the stuff that Josh has been going through. We're going to talk about some of the stuff coming up here at our church. And we are going to do it uh, smartly. Hmm. <laughs> in spite of ourselves in spite of ourselves we're going to do it smartly um we usually pray it up and then we'll go through our sponsors you want to pray us up i'd love to yeah father thank you so much for our church thank you for everyone that's watching today and we pray that everything that we do and say would be pleasing in your sight help us to dive deeper into the word that you've given us we ask this in christ's name amen amen so we have a host of amazing sponsors on this podcast there's an extensive uh form you have to fill out mm. and all these people have have passed the test starting with crossfit northern kentucky they are the suppliers of all your fitness goals needs anything you need nutrition they take care of it all they're actually really good friends of mine that own the gym andrew and kendra and they're good god-fearing folk Amen. as well um kentucky olive Purveyors of fine oils and balsamics. Also, a lot of other things. Any charcuterie needs that you have, candles, uh, gift baskets around the holidays. We're past the holidays now. But if you messed up this year, you can go back over there and redeem yourself in the following years. Tattoo Tina's, home of the, <laughs> home of the, of the most beautiful and talented tattoo artists in all the land. They have a third artist now. Her name's Ashley. Uh, very excited about that. Shout out Ashley. Uh, yeah, young lady. Um, yeah, I guess they've been known uh, Ashley for all a long time, and her artwork is really, really good. Very, she's kind of getting into the business, but really, really great. Business is expanding, which is uh, both awesome and terrifying. Mm. Premier Fitness, grappling, wrestling, and jujitsu. That's Brother Mitch Casson from uh, I can never remember Mount Carmel Baptist Church. Uh, that's his jujitsu gym. So you can go over there. They have jujitsu. They have private wrestling. All sorts of stuff like that. Steak and Shake. Brother Michael Steak and Shake. Um, the, br br I mean, pretty much the most friendly Steak and Shake of all time. He came in and got a haircut yesterday. I was telling him, I was like, it's better than Chick-fil-A in there. The pepper sauce that, that steak, and, steak and Shake has? Yeah. Unbeatable, man. So if you go to Steak and Shake yeah. and you don't order two garlic burgers, mm. there's something wrong with you. They're good. You can't eat them while you're driving. We right. talked about this on this podcast before. You better not have... You, your reaction time slows because you because you got greasy hands pretty much. I mean, I'm not saying I've tried it, but it's definitely pull over, eat them, do it do it separately. Um, serious archery products, tough head broadheads, the best in the land. Uh, since we talked last, I used serious archery products and tough head broadheads on a bear. Yeah, you guys can uh, check out my Facebook. On my Instagram, if you'd like to take a look at that bad boy. Um, a lot of guys from church went. I don't know if we talked about it on here. I mean, we did. But uh, a really good time. Uh, met some nice people. And I actually got to witness to some of the guys up in Canada. It was pretty awesome. 
And last but not least, our friends at AIG. We have lots of those. Yeah. And, and it's growing exponentially because I just talked to uh, Isaac Ramsey. He, he has applied for a position over at AIG. Great guy. Uh, yeah, he was, I was excited about it, and I told him, I said, it's pretty cool. So yeah. pretty neat. I got him in trouble with his girlfriend in Sunday school, but, you know, he did, it was his fault, really. So what are you preaching on, preacher? <laughs> We're in the book of Jonah, brother, <laughs> and I uh, have loved it. I've never preached through Jonah before. Oh, I didn't know that. So it is infinitely more challenging than I thought it would be. Why so? I, it just, I, everything about it, I it's one of those books that, is so convicting personally. Yeah. And I don't know about you, but I've always found that when I'm preaching from a place of personal conviction in the sense that the Holy Spirit has been working on me the entirety of the week leading up to that, it makes it harder to preach that Sunday. I would, yeah. So diff, a little, little different probably, but some of the songs. Yeah. Uh, when there's things that are going on that it's, I think some of the lyrics of some of the songs we do just speak directly to, I'm always like, oh, yeah. that's, you know, that's, that's for me. You know, and I've said that before, like, Sometimes I just think about like when I pray about songs or when I pick things, why they end up and yeah. kind of in there. And then as I'm going through them Sunday morning or Tuesday, I'm like, oh, that's because, you know, those are for me this week. Yeah. You know, but necessarily, which is kind of the same thing. Um, here's an interesting question. So you made it through two verses your first yeah, week. Right. Um, can you compare for me? We talked about this with Samson with mm. me. Jonah from little Josh when he was in Bible school yeah. to Josh now. It's a much more uh, rich tale as I understand it now. But the character of Jonah is less, from my perspective, having now studied it deeply the last couple of months leading up to this, the story of Jonah is far less about the prophet than it is about the God that's sending him and the people who's receiving him. Mm -hmm. And so Jonah's just another character in the story. And, and so when, when I think about Jonah and the giant well, which is right. what I would have thought as a kid, <laughs> did you do the flannel graphs? And oh, the, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I, I looked around. Dude, when you said that, that Sunday, I looked around to see if anybody was going to ask what flannel graph. I saw some faces that were like this. Yeah. Yeah, you know, we could stick it up there and it sticks. Yeah, absolutely. I called them felt, mm. but, but I knew exactly what you were talking about. Right, yeah. right, right. Yeah. So that was my understanding. It was about a dude who got swallowed up by big fish, is what I said on Sunday. And it was the story is is, is much deeper and richer. It's it's only forty eight verses, small mm -hmm. book, but it's jam packed with like humor and terror and irony and action, and it's a really wild book. Yeah, I think about um, also to, to to piggyback with what you said as a as a kid. The focal point of that story is Jonah. Yeah. And, and I thought you said something interesting, it, being inside the belly of a whale, fish, whatever, right. and you right. get the argument, well, whales aren't fish. Well, yeah, th they probably didn't know that, you know, in whatever BC that book was written. But the interesting part about that, this is a minute part of that story. It's not really, yeah. I mean, it's important it's because it's something that shows what God can do, yeah. right? Um, but... It's one of those things where that's really not the most important important part of the story. What do you say, uh, as opposed to like with him in three days or whatever, uh, being a Christophany? Yeah, I think yeah. that's entirely the point, which is why Jesus references it. I agree. Multiple times in the New Testament. Um, the whole story of the Old Testament is shadows and pictures of the Christ that's right. coming. And Jonah is just another in that long line of people who through their own failures reveal that there's going to one day be a greater Jonah which is Jesus. Right. Greater Adam, greater everything. Yeah. So, I mean, if you think about, I always think about pictures of Christ in the Old Testament when yeah. it's, when it's used, when they, when God uses a, a man. Yeah. It's always very strange because you're like, well, he was a completely flawed, terrible human. Well, so was every other human, <laughs> right. you know, he, every right. other human being. Yeah. Um, so it's just, you know, uh, Jonah, Isaac, Joseph, all of these pictures and you go, oh, like, oh, look at this. It's not really something they tell you as a kid. At all. <laughs> I was reading, so this morning I was reading Genesis 12 through 15 because we're, I'm doing the chronological reading yeah. plan. And I was reading about Abraham. And, you know, you think about Abraham as the f the father of the faith. He had many sons. Right. He was this great leader. And he was kind of awful. Not <laughs> He yeah. Did, yeah. continually failed and made terrible decisions. And, and I think that's the entirety of the point of the Old Testament. It's just pointing us to something greater that's coming that will do the things that we can ourselves. 
Yeah, not to shamelessly plug my blog, but it seems like every single week I'm talking about a a, a Bible character yeah. that has uh, been given a task and then go, oh, I'm going to do it this way as mm-hmm. opposed to this way. And when you look at Abraham and all the kind of the forefathers, especially if you go through Hebrews, you're like, oh, that's everyone that it mentions. <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> like then my blog gets kind of boring, I think, because I'm like, oh, this is the same story yeah. over and over and over again. So... Um, as we as you go through chapter one, what are some of the things that you did not cover that you thought well didn't get it time wise didn't get an opportunity to cover that you think is important? I think there are several things. Number one, uh, I didn't spend enough time on the irony of the entirety of the Book of Jonah. There's one of the reasons that throughout church history, some have asked if this is a historical account or an allegorical account because it's entirely about role reverse reversals mm-hmm. and subversion of expectations. Right. And so you have the prophet who is the only one that's not righteous in the first chapter. <laughs> right. You have the pagans who um, are the ones that are praying to God. You have Jonah who is being sent and going in the opposite direction. You have God saying, get up, and Jonah going down and down and down and down. So there's so much about that that's just ironic. In fact, throughout Jewish literature history, it's been considered a comedy. Jonah is— Oh, really? Com- yeah. I don't know if I knew that. Yeah, it's it's really fascinating. And there there's so much about their understanding of Jonah, which I find compelling. One is when they read it, and it's read throughout multiple times throughout the Jewish calendar right. during their historical or their, their feasts and things like that. One of the, the interesting things they do is they talk about the pagans, and they say that there were 70 people on the ship, and the 69 of them were from entirely different countries. So they were representing— the entirety of the world. That's that's what we're well, supposed to pick up from that, that, that well, this pagan gathering is the people of the world that God is reaching out towards, that Jonah is literally in proximity with, that doesn't want anything to do with them. So, <laughs> so, uh, so very ta- Tower of Babel-esque, yeah. if you think about like yeah. putting this many people representative from each of them. I'd, I'd never heard that, which yeah. is awesome. I mean, that's kind of interesting. And then one of the things that I think it, when I kind of studied through this in one of my, I think my Old Testament classes, talking about when something went wrong, Jonah got deeper. Yeah. When something went wrong, Jonah got deeper to where he got down into the belly of the ship, couldn't go any lower. Yeah. And, and basically was like, okay, well, I'm not. And with all the rocking and rolling, uh, I was in the Navy, hmm. and I'm not sure how he was able to fall asleep in the belly of the boat with all of that going on. I can't imagine it's a big, super stable vessel. Yeah, I don't. I don't think that he probably did sleep. And uh, so we're preaching chapter two this week. And what's so interesting is it, it, it seems as if Jonah's prayer doesn't come until the third day. I mean, he's been in there three days and three nights before he finally cries out to God. And, right. And can you imagine three whole days of just stewing in the belly of a fish, mad? What do you think it smelled like? Fish. Uh, probably fish. Probably worse than that. I think. Yeah, like yeah. like smelly fish. <laughs> Disgusting. <laughs> I do a lot of fishing, and I do a lot of fish cleaning. Oh, it's brutal. I don't want to spend an hour in that, much less th- three days yeah. in that. Um, was Jonah super self righteous? Oh yeah, yeah yeah. Aren't uh, we all? Yeah no, I mean a hundred percent. But I think one of the things I think you did you, that you pointed out without actually saying it when I, last Sunday was how self-righteous he was, especially yeah. with, uh, we talk about it all the time in, in some of my small groups, <clears throat> me especially with my personality, and you've kind of gotten to know me. I will be the first to go, man, I hope God gives that person what they deserve. Mm. And then I will immediately, <laughs> he will he will kind of instill in my heart, well, I didn't give you what you deserve. And mm. I thank God for that because, yeah. you know, I, I deserved far worse than what I have gotten for sure. I'm extremely blessed, which is, Kind of what Jonah's doing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I, so. I, I find it really interesting that his self-righteousness is so much tied up to ethnic identity and nationality. Oh, really? One of the things that I didn't point out on Sunday that I really wish I would have had time, but we were just tapped out by the time I got there, was the fact that pagans in chapter one ask him a list of questions about his own identification. Right. Yeah, they do. And what they're trying to get at is, what God do you serve? Right. And he reverses that. It's so interesting. Rather than talking about the God that he serves first, he says, I'm a Hebrew. And then he talks about next God. So it's almost as if he's saying, this is my primary identification. 
which goes back. Oh, that's interesting. Which, I, didn't, I, remember, I didn't think of it that way. Which goes back to Second Kings, this, the story that we see about Jonah. The right. only other time he's mentioned in the Bible when he is he is prophesying about the expansion of the northern borders right. of Israel in protection against Assyria. So it all kind of feeds into this narrative that Jonah was a guy who cared deeply about the nation of Israel, right? Cared deep, cared deeply about his ethnic identity, and so the self righteousness for him was. Why would I go to the people I've preached against already? Right. I'm only I, I'm only prophesying to the people of God in this area, and so I think there was some like xenophobia and nationalism and patriotism so, that's well, all wrapped into his self self righteousness. So I'm going to ask a couple of questions, and and without without getting us in trouble, sure, uh, with current state of affairs, absolutely. Is the nation of Israel somewhat pompous at this point of history? Would you say overall with some of the things that you read? I'm setting you up. At this, not not today. So weird, Back man, with, I, during, during Jonah's time. I lost the ability to hear when you said no. <laughs> um, in, in Jonah's yeah, time? Yeah, not, not today. In Jonah's time. Yeah, I mean, that's why God broke their back. Right. So you, you, this is, so you have a series of kings in Assyria. Right. Jonah's prophesying. Somewhere in the 780s period, going down closer, coming closer to Christ. And it's in a very short period, there's going to be a king that comes and just smashes Israel. And right. so they are very, 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 very full of themselves at this point. And some of it is is warranted. The Assyrians, they were terrible people. Sure, They've we talked about yeah. that before. I mean, they were garbage when it comes to their willingness to just brutally murder people. Yeah. And so all of that's working together, but yeah, the, but Israel is boasting of itself continuously, and and at this exact same time, Israel has one of the most wicked kings in its history. Right, right. So, so uh, to kind of uh, kind of a follow up to that with God's plan, this yeah. could be a hard one. So, sure. so well, it won't be hard, but it's going to be hard for me to kind of get with God's plan and their understanding <laughs> that the nation of Israel is set apart. What would Jonah, besides God's direction? believe that he can go to Nineveh and change these pagans around? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Do you understand what I mean? I, absolutely. I think that's yeah. a great question. You know, it, I was convicted also about smacking on Jonah a little bit too much when yeah. I was preaching that first week. It's kind of like Simon Peter's the same way when you preach about <laughs> Peter. Everybody loves to just beat on Peter. I do. And it's like, I'm Peter. I'm Jonah. Right. But like this was a suicide mission. It could not be interpreted any other way right. for a prophet of God. You're you're going there to die. Mm -hmm. And so who would want to be a part of that? And you're not only going to die, you're going to die heinously in a very horrific way right. by the hands of people you despise. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I, I understand that portion, but I think the harder thing when I started really kind of looking in yeah. it, it to it was, well, if God's already told prophet after prophet that the nation of Israel is where this is going to be, that, that Israel is the religion of the, the Hebrew religion is, yeah. is for us. Why, why are we even concerned yeah, but with, he, these, with these people? Up to this point, he has given prophets the ability to yes. speak into pagan nations. Yeah. I'm just, I'm, I'm kind of coming at it from Jonah's point of view. Yeah. I'm trying to understand like, Hey, if this is, if this is for us, these yeah. are, and, and the ethnic thing that you kind of talked about yeah. before and the pride and in, in being what you are, would really kind of feed into that idea of going. I'm not messing with them dogs, dude. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna hang with my own people because I'm safe here and and you know I feel like I'm doing a good job. It's it's <laughs> We're doing the, a good job. It's a, one of the reasons also why I said that as far as I can tell, this is the first time in biblical history up to this point that a prophet has been called to go to a nation and prophesy directly to them okay. there. Okay. So it's always always and only up to this point happened within the confines of their own safe border. Okay. And so imagine you're the first prophet in the history of Israel that's called to go to a pagan nation. If it were me, I'm probably right. thinking, did I eat some weird bologna or something? Right. Did I have a bad dream? Is this real? And up until this point, we have the prophets being the mouthpiece right. for the nation of Israel, for a God that's getting the instruction and kind of passing them along mostly. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, and it's, up to this point, it's preaching repentance to God's people, right. not to the Gentiles. Also, you guys are continually screwing things up, so you yes. need to 
do some sacrificing and do right. some <laughs> right right <laughs> good what um what else what else did you want to spend a little time on so a couple of things one i find it utterly fascinating and maybe i was the only person in the room because i spent some significant time on this but i, I want to flesh this out a little more fascinating that the pagans were able to recognize that the storm was was supernatural yeah I, the, immediately right well, for, well, from the text, immediately they were like, this is not, we need, somebody has angered something. Yeah. Like you've heard the expression before, there are no atheists in foxholes. Exactly. And so in, I just uh, was kind of intuiting that to that moment that there's this gathering of hardened sailors who are in already a place that has really tumultuous storms. The Mediterranean right. is really renowned for quick storms that happen brutally. Mm-hmm. And there was something about this one that they were like, oh, no, this is different. Right. And their instant reaction is to lighten the ship by throwing cargo and start praying. Which, by the way, from a military standpoint, yeah. seems the opposite. Really? Well, yeah, if that thing's tossing and turning, you want to add more bulk so it's harder to move. See, this you, is You want to add more list. This is why you're such an asset to this. I don't know if that's true. Never but, would no, have no, thought but, about but that. When, you, when it said, I'm, I looked at Tina, I'm like, lighten the boat. Yeah. Why? So that you, the wind bothers you more and the... You want more ballast on when we had rough storms and of course I'm a submarine, but if you were on a, uh, a a battleship or a cruiser, they would immediately pull water into the ballast because it would sink the boat down, make it heavier, and make it harder to toss and turn. Mm. So they went the opposite direction. Can I sidetrack us for a second? Yes. What was the food like on a submarine? Awesome. No they makes yes, they fed us amazingly. How, way how, better than how far? How like how long would you guys be out? Ninety days away from port. Uh, I was under, we, we covered 14 days. I think everybody's heard this, but I think Not me. <laughs> we covered 14 days of the Nevada's refit one time. So 114 one time, or I'm sorry, 105 underwater. Huh? But yeah, we had, we came up one and got uh, some supplies, but like the, the food was great. They made sure that was one of the things they made sure of is for these, we're going to keep these clowns underwater out of the sun. We're going to feed them pretty good. Good for you, man. I, I went yeah. on the USS North Carolina last year. Oh yeah. And one of the things that. I couldn't get over. Of course, it was a World War II era ship. Right. Very small. One of the things I could not get over is there's no way I could fit in this thing. I can't move around down here. So the one thing I tell people, and again, we're sidetracking, but but it is kind of on topic. We're coming back to Yeah, it. yeah. Uh, my rack was if I wanted to sleep on my front, on my, my stomach, yeah. I got in. And if I wanted to roll to my back, I didn't have enough room. So I had to get out and get back in. Wow. So that bunk above me was that close those are the kind of things that you like you remember like yeah. that was kind of inconvenient you know to yeah. have something I wonder, in a little coffin i wonder <laughs> so here's here's also what i've been thinking i wonder yes. like a first cent no, prior to a first century you're talking 700 bc what kind of stuff are they carrying on their ship yeah well you'd have to have food yeah. and you try to probably things that were not perishable so you'd have like wheat and beans and the things those kind of things uh fresh water yeah um, for sure. Yeah. Um, definitely pr- more than likely they had, um, that was probably a ship. If Jonah's going, then he's carrying things with him for, so like if, you know, if somebody gets on there and they're a tent maker, like Paul was, you're yeah. going to carry your tent making tools. You're going to carry your, uh, things like that. If someone was rich and chartered the boat, I would assume that they would be carrying a lot of different stuff. Um, uh, the payment, for yeah they didn't have paper money right. so you've got probably chests full of coins i would say that's probably huh. on there i mean i'm just i've been thinking about this this week because so like you know tarshish there, there's some question as to where that's at right. in the biblical history because there's not really any clear reference but but at the very least it's 1500 miles maybe as much as 2500 miles away and again that is highlighting just right. how far he's running from god's will but surely that one ship is not taking him the entirety of that trip. Maybe they're docking at different places and ports and maybe switching ships and things like that. But I, but I was just thinking about that this week. Like, what? how what, much stuff is going to be on a ship that's going 2,500 miles? Well, let's talk about this. What time, what, what approximate year would this be? Seven, I don't even, I'm a, I hesitate to even say. Yeah, give seven, me an approximate. 760, nice. something like so that. So 700 years later. I would assume that there's probably because you're thinking about Paul's trip where he got sidetracked on the island. Mm. That was probably what twenty seven hundred miles. Mm. One ship. Yeah, that's true. Well, no, I'm just in my mind knowing yeah. of of another and a long trip. You know, 
been trying to navigate at night in the clouds with no stars. Mm -hmm. So you're going to have, it's going to get extended as well. So that's a lot. I mean, they have to have a lot of food, right? A lot of water. They didn't have any kind of way to desalinate any kind of seawater. And fruit. You yeah. had to carry fruit so you didn't get scurvy. Yeah, and for right, real. Right. Yeah, they've, they had figured that out by then. Let me ask you this. One of the things I said on, on Sunday um, was that, at least from my perspective, and I was very clear to say that this is my opinion. Mm -hmm. if, if I feel like I'm giving something that is straight opinion, I want, I want to make that clear. But I thought from my opinion, uh, from my perspective of reading the text, Jonah sleeping in the midst of a storm was revealing of his current disposition. The I don't care disposition? Yeah. yeah I agree. I, again, I don't have any right. context in which to say that. But I, you think about this. And again, coming from a, a standpoint of I was on a ship, right? Yeah. If there is something going on, let's say that we are in a spot where we have sprung a leak. I would be extremely concerned about the mental health of one of the people on my damage control team who, while I'm getting patches and I'm trying to get this taken care of and I'm, you know what I mean, I'm putting this giant patch on and we're cranking down this thing to, to, to seal the, the, the breach in the hull of my submarine, if that dude's laying in the corner sitting down playing a video game. Yeah. Where I'm going to go, hey, what? where's your head at? Yeah. So I think immediately, I mean, it was kind of like a, a beacon. Yeah. I'm like, hey, the dude's sleeping in the basement. That's or the, the, the positive. That's probably one of the guys you want to go talk to because he doesn't seem overly concerned about what's going on. Yeah, and it leads into a really interesting theme that we see develop here and pick up in a number of different places in the Old Testament, so going all the way back to Abraham and Isaac, but this story of substitution and that a payment's going to have to right. be made. So the pagans, when they recognize the supernatural nature of the storm, they go to Jonah and they say, once they find out, they, they cast lots, and they look at him and they say, what should we do to you? Right. It's not what should we do, it's what must we do right. to you. So they realized, okay, you're the cause of the storm, mm -hmm. God is angry, we need to satisfy his wrath, what do we need to do to you to take care of that? I'm not laughing at you, I'm just laughing at the idea that casting lots is going to definitely give you the answer. That you <laughs> well, I think through the superintendence of God, yeah, I understand right, that. But it's right. just like when when they pick the t the twelfth disciple, they're like, "We'll cast lots yeah, exactly. to figure it out." Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Good idea. But anyway, it, yeah, I mean, it was interesting. What what do we do? Throw me over. Yeah, you, you know what I mean. Like I obviously, but to have the here's where I think is something that I noticed right. To be on a ship sleeping while all this is going on, understanding that God is upset with you. To when they came to you, you have deflected every single thing up to this point. Yeah. You have 100%. And, and, and without hesitation, you say, you're going to have to throw me over. Yeah. That's what's going to calm this storm. And I don't, I don't know that that was repentance. I think it might have been resignation. You think? Uh, yeah, Well, man. I mean, just—but just, but you, have, you have run yeah. deeper, 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 deeper. And then when they confront you— you would think that somebody like Gideon would go, oh, no, 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 no. Well, yeah. let's, well, there's got to be another way. Right. He didn't. No, he just, he like, just tossed like, me. Yeah, just tossed me over. And it was his idea. It wasn't theirs. Right. They're like, what do we do to you? Yeah. He wasn't like, let's all get down on our knees and pray together. He's like, yeah, just pick me up and toss me, man. What? Do you think that he understood that th that something had to be paid? Yeah. Maybe. Well, I, I don't know. Well, I mean, you could say, hey... <laughs> Let's just try to turn the ship around and let get me where I'm supposed to be going. Yeah. Nope. That wasn't even a... Which it's apparent they'd already tried to do that. Yeah. Yeah. So... The whole thing is really fascinating to me. And then the, the giant fish comes up and he stews in it for three days. Interestingly enough, one of the things that you said that always shocks me is I have had conversations with people. And the one thing they find not believable about the Bible is that a guy lived in the belly of a fish for three days. And I'm like... Oh, I, don't get me wrong, dude. I understand that there are things in there that are very difficult to explain. I'm like, what about the dead guy that Jesus got back up after like four days? What about that yeah. guy? And, yeah. and then what about, you know, the fact that <laughs> that God spoke and the earth was formed? Yeah. And the, I'm like, what? Are, those are okay, but this one's hey. the one you have. A, a boat carries <laughs> how many people right. and animals and all of these things for over a year. 
And this is the three day fish is the one that you're focused on he, as is not believable. He made the sun, the sun stand still. He talked right. through a donkey. Like there's yeah. so much bizarre. I wouldn't. I probably wouldn't put this in the top ten most crazy things that happen. I, I no, I can't. So, Let's talk quickly about the historicity of Jonah. The fact that okay. I genuinely believe it's history and not I allegory do too. wholeheartedly. Yeah. Do you know? I learned this this week when I was stu- or the past week when I was studying. There is a myth or a legend from Assyrian culture about a man who showed up on their shores and preached repentance with yes. bleached skin. Yeah. Did you know that? I did. I did actually. No, I did actually know that. Fascinating. I don't know the whole story, but. Um, well, it's like you're a, gonna laugh at this, but Graham Hancock, who does the uh, the, the history yeah, kind of stuff yeah. and everything, he he talks about the Assyrian religion and right. uh, not just the flood being something that's in multi religions, but also right. the story of Jonah. Yeah, and the Assyrians having record of a guy showing up out of nowhere, just randomly yeah. preaching, yeah. who had no hair, no eyebrows, no, and his skin had a deep color of white because of the bleaching, which. Raise the question, like, what, what what would the juices inside the belly of a fish do? What kind of gastric acid juices of a fish ever again on this podcast? I'll be happy. (laughs) What kind of like stomach acid? What's that going to do to your skin? I would say, yeah. I mean, I would say it would it would make you milky. (laughs) Is juices is milky worse than juices? I think so. Is it? Let's ask the audience. Live poll okay. right now. (laughs) Comment below which one of those is a grosser term. Yeah, I mean. I, I I look at it even differently. Okay. Okay. And here's here's where we'll go. I believe from everything that I have studied and read that the Israelites and Jewish people in general are amazing historical or historians. Yeah. For where it is placed in the prophets, yeah. it would be very difficult for me to ascertain that being just an allegorical book in between other prophets of I mean, this is their history book. Yeah. Right. And the, and you, Jesus referenced laws and prophets and you talk to them now and they still, they have the law books and the, you know, it, 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 where it sits, it doesn't sit with Job and Ecclesiastes and as one of the poetic books, even though it's very poetic. Yeah. It's you know, really well written. Right. Whoever the original author was is very, very well written. So no, I, I would say just based on that alone, also based on the fact that Jesus referenced it multiple times. 100%. Yeah. I mean, if I believe that he's the, he is God and man, I believe he understands what is true and what is not true. I would also say, uh, unlike ancient Jewish allegorical writ- writing and ancient writing in general that was allegory, it references dates and times and places and people and names and all of those things, yeah. which are incredibly uncommon for that type of writing. Right. Now there, you look at things like same. I mean, we're getting the same kind of talk about Job, right? Yeah, right. It's same kind of, uh, deductions you can make about the writing style and the way that they name people and, and absolutely. Yeah. And absolutely. the places, um, which I also believe is historically accurate. Me too. Book. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what else? What do you got? That's about it, man. Yeah. I, I wanted to cover irony. I wanted to cover history. I wanted to cover substitution. All those things were about that. really important. What do you want to talk about coming up here at church? We can change gears a little bit. We've got a lot of stuff going on and listen, we've already talked about if you start cherry picking people out of Sunday school, for your class, there's going to be a problem. Yeah, you just need to get ready for it, man. I'm taking, I'm taking the best, <laughs> the cream of the crop, coming to cross-centered parenting, to life group leaders. Prepare yourself. I'm poaching. No, no I'm kidding. Well, we're not, we're not targeting those people. We're trying I'm just to giving you a hard time. I know. We're trying to reach out to people that are uh, not currently attending life groups that are trying to navigate this crazy parenting world. You don't know anything about that, day, do you, Danny? No, no. Uh, I'm waiting for the Christ-centered centered parenting of adult children <laughs> class. Just merge classes, man. Let's do it. So our, Lauren and I have a real burden that parents specifically are unprepared to meet the needs of their kids in this current culture, leading out from a cross-centered view of parenting. And so for that reason, we want to help equip parents. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. Spiritually or just in general? What do you mean? Uh, the un- Unprepared uh, spiritually themselves oh, or yeah. just in general? Both. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So... You know, we're going to talk about failure to launch and we're going to talk about growing up and being men and women and what that looks like yeah. in society, not just spiritually. What about helicopter parenting? Yeah. I struggle with that, man. 
So, you do a good job, it seems like. I don't know. So I You let your kid around me. That's yeah. not very helicopterish. Fact. That is a fact. <laughs> so I have uh, four kids, five and under, and we struggled for a long time to have kids. Mm-hmm. And so Benjamin, our firstborn, is like yeah, it was it's been really hard to to not be a helicopter dad with well, him for because sure. we fought and for him and prayed for him and I mean so desperately wanted a kid. So I struggle being the helicopter dad. Lauren is the exact opposite. She would say that. Really? Yeah. She's not that at all. She's a little more of a, like a drill sergeant when it comes to raising the kids, which is a good thing, not a bad thing, but also is very nurturing and loving. And I feel like I can say this because I love her uh, very much. Uh, they're gonna out, they're gonna outgrow her in about four years. Yeah, so Jonathan's got to... about three weeks. Yeah. So he'll be taller than her. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I. That's not very nice. Huh? <laughs> true story. But anyway, yeah. So we just have a burden about that, especially. With the things that culture is presenting now, sexual identity, gender identity, all those things that that is popping up that we kind of need to have an answer for. Yeah. So if you're a parent and you're trying to figure out what that looks like for your kid, we meet 930s, 930 at 202E. That's our second floor just outside the sanctuary a little ways. Come and see us. Okay. Um, let's see. Wednesday nights. Yeah. What so we got? We are starting a Bible study in 1 Corinthians, yep. and we're going to be doing intentional prayer. It's going to be about an hour, 6.30 to 7.30, about half an hour of intentional prayer and about half an hour of Bible study. I work my other – when does it start? Uh, it starts tomorrow. So What time yeah. What time is it? 6.30. 6.30. So I can, I'm going to try and make it over by 7. Sweet. I, I work late on t- Wednesday night, yeah. but I, I mean, I feel bad missing the prayer walking, but, but yeah, I, don't know this. I got lots of questions. Yeah. Well, great. There'll be a lot of this. First Corinthians is a wild book. We just did it in Sunday school. So a lot going be, on. Uh, yeah. Lot oh, going you on. could say that. What else we What else we got going on? We got be people getting baptized left and right. Oh, yeah. God is really growing our church yep. right now. And so I just want to encourage you, again, if you do, are not currently attending a church in Boone County or surrounding areas and yep. you're looking for a family, come on home. We'd love to have you. Um, I think that, too, I want to touch on this. Jonah application for real life yeah very much so yeah don't if god is directing your path you, you don't have a better plan uh, again my something we discuss all the time i, I did want to touch on that i'm i'm actually going to steal that line <laughs> that is phenomenal okay god's directing your path you don't have a better plan that's true i'll attribute it to you for the well, first th- time you can do the first time but I, got, <laughs> well, I got news for you <laughs> that's a good uh, line I, I wish that i remembered it more often yeah and uh, what happens is I forget it, and then after I jack everything up, then I go, "Oh, <laughs> oh yeah, I was uh, that thing I said I should have thought about that before." Yeah, I decided to veer right here in the in the path. But um, also, we want to tell you that if you have questions, if you if you are watching this, you don't go to church with us, or if you're watching it and you do go to church with us, you have questions. You want to talk about Jesus? You want to talk about anything that we talk? About, please reach out to myself or Josh. Amen. Uh, we would. I would love. To have a conversation with anybody who's watching, going, "Hey, I got some questions." Amen. So, <laughs> it's, that's my favorite. So, um, other than that, I'm trying to think of anything we need to announce. Can Wednesday we, nights dinner. Do dinner and uh, stuff start back up? February tenth. February tenth. Mm-hmm. That's Tina's birthday. It's a good day. That is not a Wednesday. February eleventh. That is a that is a that's a Sunday. Yeah. February the sixth. Okay. February twelfth. Stay tuned. Next February seventh is what I meant to say. <laughs> I was thinking about Tina's birthday. It was I know like you I got were. confused. I know and you it's February seventh. Yep. So I'll pray. I'll pray us out. Lord, we just thank you for this time. Lord, I hope that something that we talked about or something we discussed has helped someone. Uh, I hope that it helps someone who maybe learned about this as a child uh, to get just a new kind of um, a new light on the story of Jonah and what it really means and, and, and how it represents us today of just, just kind of fighting you the whole step of the way. Mm-hmm. Lord, we just understand that, that you're better and you are a much better planner than we are, Lord, and help us to remember that prior to as opposed to after. Lord, we just thank you for the way that you continually bless our church. Um, we ask that we are good stewards of, of your grace, Lord, that we can just um, help the people that are kind of coming in and help the people that are joining and just, um, just get them pointed in the direction to do more service. And Lord, we just thank you for your son, Jesus. In his name we pray. Amen. Amen.